you know, let me ask you something because you you just you just gave us a earful. Um, you talked about yourself as a rapper. Um, everybody know you for the so crispy joint. Um, yeah, you talked about yourself as a CEO um, with the rap hustlers. What, what did? How did you even come into the game? Did you come into the game as a, a record industry exec? Um, what was you trying to be the next Kevin Lyles? I, I it, know it you were shopping beats because I you, yeah. you mentioned drummer yeah, boy, boy and shopping his beats. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I think it was like this: like, like I believe that one door opens up two more. Okay, <laughs> for me, okay, when I left. Memphis from working the corporate situation and was like, all right, I'm ready to take on music. I started to invest in my little brother's projects. Got my own distribution deal with, with, with Selecto hits in my backyard and started to just buy my own lessons and learn how to be a CEO and put out projects and do that thing. But I'd always been rapping my entire life. You know what I mean? That's something that I could do. But I got a chance to befriend. I had a clothing store back in Memphis and I happened, it was one of the hot spots and um, T. Draper used to bring in um, A-Ball and MJG. So I knew them early. You know what I mean? I knew Tony Draper and these were my OGs. So it's like, I saw them make money from music. So I had a skill set to be a musician and be an artist, but I didn't know how to make the money from it. So I was kind of called to that. So when I was able to invest in other groups and learn, learn, how, to, learn how to earn, Basically, it was like, okay, when the opportunity presented itself to, I'll tell you what I what I did. I, I got drummer boy, Chris Golson, when he was out of high school. I heard his beats, I thought they were dope. I would fly to meet with our A&Rs like Dino Del Valle, D and Y over at Siobhan, over at Rough Riders at the time. We're talking 01, 02. And I would go yeah, up there. And so I, for, I, for people who are not familiar with those names, Dino Del Valle, this, this is a brother who, um, wasn't he? He was responsible for that cash, cash money, money deal, correct? Yeah, he signed a, yeah, he signed cash money's deal. Yeah. He, signed, uh, he, he was responsible for doing a little flip when he flip blew up at Sony. He did that too. Um, but long, long, long time friend. I just wrote Dino the other day. But like, yo, tell tell him I said what up too. Um, I am, I am. Early when I was shopping groups way back in the days, Dino. You know, I used to go up when he was. I, I forget where Universal. he was at A&R at, but but it was before he even went to Universal. He was, at, uh, he was at Payday, I think. Payday, you know what I'm saying? There you go. First, yeah, at Payday. So, like, um, I ended up I ended up s selling beats is what I ended up doing uh, for Drummer Boy. I went up there and started selling beats. When I, I didn't even really know that was a hustle. I just get my beats for free. But when I played a beat to Dino, when I was trying to get him to sign my group, he didn't want to sign my group, but I knew Dino kind of felt me, so I was going to spit a freestyle. But before I could even get a verse out, it was like, okay, he heard the beat, like the beat, so he give me 5,000 for the beat. At that time, I saw a hustle right then. I said, okay, that's it. I'm finna go back to Memphis and get all the producers and sell beats. I had a 10 song deal with DNY, took that paperwork and went and got me a publishing deal from uh, Universal Music Publishing back in 01. Okay, slow, slow, slow down for a minute because you moving quick. You go Word. from selling one beat with Dino. How did you get to DNY at Rough Riders? I asked Dino to give me any other people that was like him. This is like, these are my first trips to New York. And I'm like, bro, point me out to some people that's like you. He's pointing me out to DNY. I went met with DNY, played them beats, and then they did a, they put on paper a 10 song deal. Rough Riders was, you know, Rough Riders was on fire back then. So yep. that paper was worth money to Universal Music Publishing. So they was able to give me a publishing deal based on me having those placements, right? I took that money, came back to Memphis and started Rap Hustles, my label. And then I did those deals with Skinny Pimp, Lil Chat, Yo Gotti, Gangsta Black, and put out projects on all those albums. Those got you. first projects, got you. yeah, those gave me my, then I left Memphis distribution and got a distribution deal with Steve Gottlieb at TVT up in New York. And I started, and I distributed uh, the Yo Gotti project through there and another Skinny Pimp project through there, right when Little John and, and, and uh, Yin Yang Twins was up there at the time. So. Um, I was always like the CEO, but I would still feature on my artist's music. Like I would be like the P. Diddy style of marketing. I still put a verse on Yo Gotti song, or I put a, you know, but those verses, and I put a DVD inside Yo Gotti CD. And doing that, it, it marketed myself as this kind of do it all kind of guy, P. Diddy kind of marketing or whatever. And I was kind of doing that. People liked my verses and my songs that I did on these songs or whatever. So they started to kind of like want to get an album or music from me. So I would put out mixtapes. While I still would be working, 
my other artist's music. I knew how to break an artist, you know what I mean? So it's like when I had my own single, I was able to get it to a certain amount of spins and then Sylvia Rohn ended up, you know, signing me. I had a um, whole like bidding war on my own music, but it, I didn't put out my own music until I put out all those projects. So I had like a fan base of people that was already hip to me. And I learned so much from putting out Yo Gotti, putting out Lil Chad, putting out Skinny Film. So I knew how to break myself. And by doing that, I was able to get my deal Universal Motown and do the artist thing. So when you hearing so crispy and, and old songs like that, like, you know, I'm already a full on CEO, understanding all the business of music. So those, those that deal just kind of put me in the situation so I can get more relationships. Once I got the relationships or whatever, I was able to just kind of keep my thing going independently and just service my base. I signed with Gazi and did a distribution deal with him when he first started Empire back in 09. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.